Welcome to Science Fiction and Fantasy Read Along. I am ATN. I'm with my friends, Yule and DM Phil. Yule, what is today? I don't know what you mean. Gardens of the Moon. Gardens of the Moon. Gardens of the Moon. Yule, isn't this what we've been waiting for? I have been waiting a lifetime, it seems, to be working on this book. And so we did the Black Company. And yes, the Black Company true. was so that we could understand what the heck we were doing. I agree. But also because it's relevant to what we're doing right now. I agree. Because it's pretty obvious that Glenn Cook read. No, no, no. Erickson read Glenn Cook. <laughs> yeah. And took some stuff from him, which I think we'll point out when we get the opportunity. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. I think it's a good idea, too. The thing about uh, Steven Erickson is, from what I understand, I've read and listened to some interviews about him and uh, with him. He, when did you find like, a time? This was a long time ago, actually. When I was real, when I was reading every single book in this ten uh, Malazan uh, Book of the Fallen series, there it is, volumes. Uh, I've never read a, a a title as long as or a series as long as this in book form, and it's title's hmm. pretty long too. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I, <laughs> yeah exactly. So uh, he played role playing games when he was a kid. GURPS. From, yeah, GURPS, uh, which was the generic universal role-playing system, which they could use using the same system. They could have a fantasy setting or a sci-fi setting, whatever. It doesn't matter. He used that for a shared world that he and Ian Esselmont work on this series of books. Uh, Erickson works on one side of the world, and Esselmont works on another side of the world. Oh, I didn't realize they were hemispherically separated. Well, it's not really that, but if you were reading this in chronological order after the very first prologue, you would read the first Esselmont book. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I I shouldn't say on the other side of the world. It's just in a different place uh, uh, separated from where we're reading now. I get you. But when did Esselmont stuff start coming out? I think it was a, uh, a while later. I don't know the exact, and I actually haven't read any of those before. Nor have I, nor have I. Although I have the first one sitting on my shelf waiting, but, you know, it's a, there's a lot of stuff to read in the world. and uh, <laughs> Yeah. So uh, let's, let's, real quick, let's, let's talk about Steven Erickson. Yeah. Because, uh, well, let's talk about a couple of things, first of all. Steven Erickson, born in 1959. So he's not super ancient or anything like that. He's younger than Martin by a little while. But boy, howdy, did he uh, he finish his series awfully quick. <laughs> At least comparatively, yes. Well, however long it took him to write the first book, he published all of them in a matter of 11 years. 10 books, 11 years. So let's assume that it took him two years to write the first book. You know, he was done within 13 years. Although done is a, a long stretch from fact since he keeps going, right? Sure. But, uh, I mean, he did it. He did 12,000 pages, man. 12,000 pages. That's a thousand pages a year, essentially. It's an, it's an incredible achievement as far as I'm concerned. It is a completed series as far as I am aware. And, uh, one of the only massive series that I've ever bothered to read, which I think we can all agree is pretty stunning. Yeah, pretty stunning. Wow, I'm really glad there was a delay there. I I thought for sure I wasn't going to get any corroboration to my story. Uh, Sorry. No, no, that's that's useful fiction. That's how I delude myself everywhere I go. I tell tell myself stories about how awesome things are, and I'm like, don't you agree? And people are like, no, you're a ding-dong. Yeah, this is an amazing – yeah, he's he's amazing. uh, uh, He's a very good writer. Okay, okay. So instead of saying he's a very good writer, let me specifically ask you, why do you like this book, this first book? Why? Well, I've read it a number of times, and each reading and rereading, and if you read the entire Malazan series, it just references this book, and things in this book reference those books. And there's a deep, crazy, long history that you know that Steven Erickson, who is a, what is he, a sociologist? He's an anthropologist. Anthropologist. So, like, he he understands, you know, cultures and stuff like that. And he really uses that in this book and in the entire series also. And he is a very well, 
he's a he's an accomplished writer as far as the written word. He puts sentences together probably better than most fantasy and you know if I have to add it in, you know, science fiction, he's probably one of the better writers out there, if not one of the best. The best, if not oh, the oh, best. Okay, hold hold on. I got to disagree with you on that one. I I just have to. Um uh-huh. if you just compare him to other fantasy writers alone, I would say there are a couple that surpass him in in the beauty of their writing, but okay. he's able to finish his books. <laughs> so I'm going to give him a pass on that one. Yeah, then- but he is definitely literary minded when he is putting his books together. Sometimes, so he was what, a graduate of the Iowa school? Yes, uh, but he, he said in an interview with Jonathan Strahan that they asked him why he was there. Okay. Oh, they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't think he, the the guy who ran it when he was there apparently did not believe he belonged at the time that he was there. So, sure. well, I, any well, there's a a certain <laughs> there's a certain style that comes from there anyway, and yeah, it's, it's high art. Yeah, he feels very much like that in this book. He has a I don't know, you know, like a Richard Ford quality. You know, that kind of stuff. I couldn't speak to that. I've never read <laughs> Mr. Richard Ford. Uh, uh, kind of long. Uh, definitely more exciting <laughs> than a Richard Ford. But he takes a lot of time to put his things together, his ideas together. And you have to swim through the entire thing to get what Erickson is talking about ultimately. He does make you pay attention. Yeah. But it's a pleasure to pay attention. He puts it together in such a way that it's a joy to read. I agree. It's fun. Yeah, and, and like I said, you know, because I like the writing style, it just makes it all the better. Yeah, he's pretty great. He's pretty great. So what about you, DM? <clears throat> well, my two-bit opinion, uh, what, really, what I really found very appealing about Steven Erickson's writing is <laughs> um, the, uh, the richness, the complexity, the, the, the data-dense story that he tells and he 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 interweaves multiple threads of of storylines over and over and over again in ways that are unimaginable and unpredictable and one of the things that's absent and i really really appreciate this a lot of writers go for volume and they fill up lots and lots of pages with like fluff descriptions that do absolutely nothing for the story and erickson gets right to the point he's very precise about the dis- about the descriptions and descriptors that he gives the reader. And uh, you don't have to wade through lots of fluff. You know that it's important. You don't have to wade through fluff, but he is not easy to read. I agree. In fact, the very first time I ever read this book, I had to reread the first 50 pages twice because I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, it was, it was 80 for me. So, really? Oh, yeah. Dude, so I for- put it down for a couple years. oh yeah this is a great book i I read this book and i was like this i'm never gonna finish this (laughs) i'm never going to so for for anybody who wants to read this book just take it up now you're gonna have to read the first 50 pages twice because Uh, that's why we're here yes that is why we're here this this is the the reason behind us making this podcast right now and starting this whole thing was yule's idea a long time ago it was because this book was so amazing, but so difficult to get into. Uh, well, I mean, I needed help understanding it also. Which Even is, now, there's a... want to talk to people that are reading along. Do you know what I mean? It's like that. I remember you coming to the bookstore and trying to talk to me about this book, and I hadn't read it. And you're like, oh my God, it's so good, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I can't help you, buddy. I'm not the guy. I can't talk to you about it. But then when I read them, then we could talk. But then it was years too late. You'd already read them. I was excited about them. You were like, I don't even remember. <laughs> so here we are. So here we are. Well, going on with my description, oh, sorry. Of books, <laughs> which, is, which is more valuable, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to say is the thing I really appreciate about Steven Erickson is the gritty, brutal realism. This is not fantasy and fluff. This is often, unfortunately, blood, guts, murder, suffering, and he portrays that in a very realistic, but not necessarily gruesome, but very realistic way in the imagery that he uses. He doesn't really, he makes you feel the, the, the trauma that other soldiers feel. And it's, 
And this is where I think we start to get into real strong similarities with Glenn Cook. Yes. Yes, I agree. And I, that's where I think there's, they, they complement each other very well. I, my two bit opinion is that, that Steven Erickson is certainly a superior writer, but it's hard to compare them, but you're talking about, you know, levels of awesomeness really at this point. Well, and there's no, there is no surplus of excellent fantasy in the world. I, I, I mean, show me a, a bookstore that has too much good fantasy on the shelves. I mean, I'll take what I can get. And oh, you have anything to add, Yule? I don't like military novels. <laughs> I don't like military movies. And this is th thick with it. <laughs> I mean, the entire thing is a military conquest story that's going on. It is, it's really awesome. I love this book a lot. I agree. The series is great. All right. So to begin with, uh, Yule, this book yeah. is dedicated to Ian Esselmont. It is. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, they played this game together. This world was created and there. Probably one person took it turn GMing and then the other person did or whatever in the basement. Yep. Yep. Yeah. With like three other friends, maybe. Um, do you guys want to talk about the dramatis personae? No. Cause there's a lot there and I don't think it's really relevant. Um, that's yes. Uh, the, he keeps a list in the beginning of the book to keep track of characters and where you know them. And the reason he does is because as you go through these books, it becomes really complicated on where you, where you encountered that person, what that person was, and all, everything else. So he creates this list for you. Otherwise, you would get lost. I suspect it was for himself as well. I suspect he risked getting lost in his own maze. Nevertheless, you can learn a thing or two by reading it. So, uh, but anyway. Yeah, I would on. often, half of my reading is usually flipping back to the beginning of the book so I can see. And then the glossary in the back, of course. There's a glossary? I do believe so. Yeah. Well, what do you know? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Once it says the end, Lul puts the book down. No, I throw it down. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I won this one, sir. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> ooh, what is this? <laughs> pages. Fun in Let's let you know there's maps also. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that <laughs> all right the, what is this first one though what is what first one now these ashes have grown cold we open the old book these oil stained pages recount the tales of the fallen a frayed empire without words without warmth the hearth has ebbed its gleam and life spark but memories against dimming eyes what cast my mind, what hew my thoughts as I open the book of the fallen and breathe deep the scent of history? Listen then to these words carried on that breath. These tales are the tales of us all, again yet again. We are history relived, and that is all. Without end, that is all. Just so you know, the entire book does not read like that. <laughs> okay, well, I think, I think that's enough of a preamble as far as that goes. We've introduced ourselves. We've introduced the books. We talked a little bit about Steven Erickson, but honestly, it's not, not really the important. Right. That's not why we're here. We're not, we're not here to talk about Steven Erickson. We're here to be, talk about a, book. a body of work that he created that is arguably a masterpiece. There are some definitely better books than others, but we're starting at the beginning and that's all we're concerned with right now. Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. Let's begin. That's a good intro, by the way. All that junk. Uh, thank you.